bonus video. Bonus video today. That's right, publishing two videos on the channel today. Maybe three. If I get the third done, we'll see, we'll see. Check out the other one, upper right-hand corner, all about the Vaporfly 4%. That's right, uh, Fashu, Fashu right here. But right now, we're going to talk about training slow in order to race fast. So I'm talking directly to Mason. Hopefully, Mason, you're watching this video, but also to other runners out there, everyone out there who's a runner especially and likes to train and race and compete, I, you know, to get those juices flowing. Folks, um, <laughs> keep in mind, I'm 33 years old. Uh, so I'm not 23 anymore like I was at the University of Colorado where I was filming yesterday. Remember that footage? Essentially, I'm getting older, which means I have to be vigilant of my body and my knees and my ankles and my plantar fasciitis. And so what am I doing in my training? I will be frank with you. 2018, I was focused very much so on long distance racing, meaning ultra running, meaning 50Ks, 50 milers, even a 100 miler. I know, I know. But in 2019, I'm going to rein it in a little bit. Not, I'm not going to go over the 50K distance. I'm going to focus on the half full marathon distance and probably one 50K and then the Pikes Peak Ascent. Shh, I'm excited for that. I'm excited for that. So I am currently strategizing my training plan for 2019, meaning what's it going to look like as far as the weekly schedule. And I'm very impressed with all of you yesterday who commented with your workout schedule on yesterday's vlog. Again, go check it out. Oh my goodness, like you guys are working hard. I mean, some of you doing two interval or three interval sessions per week and I'm like, oh my gosh, I just did my first inter inter interval session yesterday for the first time in 2018. I digress. I train slow so that I can race fast. What do I mean by that, Mason and everybody else? Essentially, uh, the body breaks down over time. You got to take care of your body. So my strategy, and now Mason, I don't know how old you are, but essentially, I am sometimes shocked at what people uh, label on Strava as easy days and it's like 750 pace. To me, 750 pace is a decent pace. I would put it at like the medium, uh, the medium pace. So there's easy, medium, hard. I would say like a, a, a harder pace, like a tempo pace for me would be, you know, maybe 645s. And so when I see 750 as an easy run, I'm just always a little surprised because easy in my books means 830 and above, meaning eight, eight minutes and 30 seconds or slower. So my, I'm just going to tell it to you so straight. Like I am, I'm not a science major. I studied history at the University of Colorado. I did not study science. I have a basic understanding of lactate threshold and anaerobic versus aerobic and we'll talk about all that in later videos but i'm just going to talk to you from experience guys <laughs> i am a firm firm believer in running ridiculously slow so your body can fully recover i'm talking resetting to a uh, hundred percent or at least 95 percent and above before you begin your next hard effort in a workout. So like if you continue to beat your body up over time, eventually your body's going to say, no, enough is enough. I am not going to handle another hard workout or another hard fart lick or another hard tempo or another like aggressive long run, like a 20 miler on us on a Sunday morning. So if you can rein it in a little bit on your easy days, which in my opinion should at least be three days a week, probably more like four days a week where you're just chilling. You're basically just chilling. And then the other days, the three other days a week, yeah, you can pick it up a little bit. I'm going to tell you a secret though right now. I pro I, 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 it's not written down on paper, but since over the last two to three years, I've probably been averaging two decently hard days per week and sometimes two hard days every for every 10 days. All I'm saying is if you if you're fresh, uh, if you're fresh when you start a hard effort, that hard effort, you're going to be able to push yourself so much further into oxygen debt 
that the uh, benefit long term is gonna is gonna be even higher than if you're starting a hard workout tired and beaten down you're not gonna be able to go as fast does that make sense for example it's I'm recording this video right now Thursday night is it Thursday yes Thursday night meaning I took it easy today I ran four miles at I think I was like 820 pace maybe 810 pace Tomorrow, I'm probably gonna run three miles, maybe four, maybe five. We'll see how I feel. Probably three to five, three to four. Saturday morning, I'm gonna make myself cry. I'm gonna make myself cry. I'm gonna run so hard. I'm gonna run a half marathon time trial. In these shoes, okay? Guys, that's, I got a little bit excited there. All I'm saying is, don't be afraid to go easy on your easy days, hard on your hard days. And I'm telling you, the anaerobic benefit long term, it'll it'll shine through. It might take a little while, but it will shine through. I'm going to stop. We'll talk more about training in later videos. Thank you, Mason, for the question and the, um, the observation on Strava. By the way, let's connect below. My Strava profile is below. And the question of the day is... Do you, how many hard training days do you have per week? Or better yet, if you can think about how many hard training days do you have per month? So, yeah, do the math, figure it out. I'd appreciate it. Comment below. You guys rock. See you tomorrow.